All right, my name is Adam Kent, and I'm really excited to be out here in Sweetwater Wetlands Park. It's one of my favorite places to look at birds and nature in the whole county, in Alachua County. And I work as a professional ornithologist, and an ornithologist is somebody who studies birds. So a professional ornithologist is someone who gets paid to study birds. I've been interested in birds my whole life, ever since I was a little kid. And I think like a lot of people who are interested in birds since a young age, I started maybe being more interested in things that I, I could see up close, like lizards or snakes or even bugs. But quickly, when I was still really little, I, I got interested in birds. And the first book I can ever remember reading is a, uh, The Golden Guide to Birds, Field Guide to Birds of North America, the one with the three buntings on the cover, indigo, lazuli, and painted bunting on the cover. Um, and it's just been something that I, all my life I've been interested in. Uh, neither of my parents were specifically interested in birds, but they both encouraged me and they both liked the outdoors. So my dad would get up at crazy times of night before dawn and drive me long ways to go look at birds. But um, I'd also look at birds in the yard or just walk the local parks ever since I was a little kid. All right, so you, you don't need any specific kind of in, uh, education to be an ornithologist, but it helps to study biology or wildlife because that gives you a good background. But there are a lot of well-known, famous, and important ornithologists that learned everything on their own. Uh, so, so it's not a, a requirement that you study uh, ornithology if you want to become an ornithologist or if you want to work with birds, but um, it, is, it definitely is useful. The most important thing is to follow your passion. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's picking what you're interested in and, and following that. And just like anything else, it, it's uh, the, the harder you try at something, the better you get. It could be birds or soccer or, uh, you know, being a business person or whatever. But, but uh, the harder you try, the, the, the better you'll, you'll be at it. And, um, you know, I think some other things are just being a good person, being happy, and um, trying to do a good job at, at what you do. And those are all really important things. I love it. There's a, Limpkin agrees with me even. Yeah. I guess just being out in nature. And it's again, it's not specifically the birds, but I just like being outside and seeing all kinds of different animals and plants and things like that. And then to be able to get paid to follow my passion, which is specifically learning more about birds and um, I'm doing it in a field setting. There are ornithologists that do uh, more of their research in a lab studying things on computers or in a lab setting but I, I like being outside when I'm studying birds. Uh, everybody always wants to know that and <laughs> I like all birds. There's not a bird I don't like. It doesn't matter if it's a house sparrow or a starling or something you know that that's not necessarily native to the United States I like all different kinds of birds uh, there's a few that that I have special fondness for for one reason or another one is the Florida scrub jay uh, I like that one because it's beautiful and fascinating and it's interesting habitat associations I worked with them for a while and they are it's the only bird that only lives in Florida so just because the Florida scrub jay is the only bird that only lives in Florida I think that's that's cool and, and their relationship with fire and the Florida landscape where they live is, is also fascinating. Cool. I could say Sweetwater, huh? You can. <laughs> this place is absolutely amazing. It, it went from, you know, just a, a, another bit of the marsh where nobody could access it to it's now the top birding spot in town, probably. And the great thing about Sweetwater is you have some woods and then you've got the, the boardwalks and the trail all around. So there's lots of room, lots of different habitats. Uh, I'd say in one morning you could probably see more species of birds right here than anywhere else in, in the county at least. And, and they're easy to see. Another thing that's nice is because so many people come here, the birds get used to people. So I've been walking along and seen a, a limpkin on the railing or an hinga and as long as you walk really quietly slowly you can get around them and they don't even fly away it's just it's incredible this is this is one of my favorite places to go look at birds in the whole state
my backyard also is really <laughs> one of my favorite places to look at birds. A memorable experience I have as an ornithologist, I would say one of the most memorable experiences I've had was when I was on an ornithological expedition to southern Mexico and I made recordings of a kind of bird and those recordings were then used as evidence to make that bird into a new species. So that was really exciting to be a part of that. That's the Navas wren and it just lives in a tiny area in southern Mexico. Well, one of the biggest threats and most obvious is habitat destruction. And if you knock down a bird's home and you tear it all down, then they can't live there and they have to go look for a home somewhere else. But often those places already have birds there. So they really are just without a home. Imagine someone just tore down your home and you had to find a new place and there weren't any other homes around. So that that's one of the, the biggest threats. Um, there are lots of other things out there like um, climate change is, uh, making conditions uh, harder for birds to live in in a lot of places. And um, even cats, outdoor cats are a big threat for birds. Uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but if you just keep your cat outside, it's probably killing birds and a lot of other animals, even if it doesn't bring them home to you. It's also a lot better for the cat if it stays inside. The cat lives a healthier life, less chance of, of disease. The cat's not gonna get run over by a car if it's in your house, probably, but it, it, there's a good chance that could happen if it's outside. So cats are another big threat, but, um, but habitat destruction is one of the most obvious invisible threats that we can see all, over, all, all around all the time. Well, I would say it's, it's a great way. Birds are just absolutely fascinating. They're everywhere. They're, uh, you could be 100 miles out in the ocean, you could be in the middle of a big city. There are always birds and it doesn't matter the season. It could be the middle of the winter, you know. There, so many other animals are cool, but, but they're harder to see. You know, even insects are everywhere, but in the middle of the winter, especially if you live somewhere cold, you, you don't see that many insects. And I think fish are really cool, but I mean, on the average day, I see zero fish because they have to live in the water. Mammals are great, but you know, they're, they're um, the average day you don't see very many, maybe a squirrel or something else, but birds are all over the place. They have so many fascinating behaviors and, um, you know, I, I would say it, just follow your passion. And if you're passionate about birds, then, then you can definitely make a living doing that, working with birds. Uh, but, but don't feel like you have to be restricted to birds either. All those other animals I mentioned or plants, plants are a great thing to, to study and work with. And, and um, there are, there's probably a bigger need for people to study plants than there is for people who study birds because so many people like birds. So just getting outside and enjoying nature wherever you are, even if it's in your yard, it, it, in the middle of a city, there's always some fascinating nature. Um, it doesn't have to be some exotic location. You don't have to go to Africa or South America to see, you know, exciting birds. It's all, there's so much stuff that's right there in your yard that, that's fascinating. Yeah, if you're just getting interested in birds and you want to learn more and you're, you think they're pretty, birds are cool and you want to just go out and kind of expand your, your bird watching hobby, I would say uh, one of the best things you can do is find a local Audubon chapter. And in Alachua County, we've got a great chapter, uh, Alachua Audubon Society, and um, not now during COVID, of course, but um, <coughs> cough, cough. Uh, we, uh, Lachua Audubon has all kinds of great field trips and there are other resources on the website and uh, also there are talks now. Lachua Audubon is doing virtual talks so you can tune in to see talks online but uh, when things get back to normal here we'll be doing talks in person and then leading field trips and in the spring and fall there are often two field trips a weekend and uh, there's almost every single weekend there's, there's a field trip so there are lots of opportunities for um, for going out with other people and learning about birds. And then you can learn on your own, just going out and looking at birds. Try to look at details, watch the birds in your yard. Like I mentioned before, you don't have to go someplace exotic to, to learn about birds and experience cool bird behavior and watch really interesting things. You could watch the birds right in your yard and see all kinds of fascinating behaviors. And, and you don't need, also like I mentioned before, you don't need 
a degree in ornithology, you don't even need to be a biologist. You can just study, uh, watch the birds yourself, note particular behaviors and things like that, and you could come up with something that ornithologists haven't even discovered themselves just by watching the birds yourself. So, so there are all kinds of ways you can do it. And that's one of the nice things about birds is they are, they are so accessible. You can see birds everywhere and um, you, can, you can approach bird study or bird watching any way you want. You can do it <laughs> very casually. You can just enjoy the beautiful birds outside or, or you can get into it very, very scientifically and look at bird genetics or um, make com computer models of bird distribution and things like that. Um, but for me, the, what I like to do most is just go outside and watch the, the birds and the natural habitats. Oh, one other bit of advice I would say is it's really useful to have a field guide. And, and nowadays there are apps and there are a lot of apps that you can get for your phone. There's the, the Sibley app, which is also in a paper field guide form, but um, you can get that on your phone. And the apps have the bird sound. That's a benefit over um, having an app versus having just the paper field guide. Uh, there's also the Merlin app from Cornell, which can help you identify birds and um, various other apps that uh, relate to birds. And some of them, are free. Merlin is free. Other ones you have to pay for, uh, but it's you probably at some point will want to have some sort of a field guide to help you identify birds if you're trying to learn more about them.